F1 teams are not finding it easy dealing with the rocket ship that McLaren has built in the past couple of months, and the fact that they're the only team who can add such a great amount of performance to the car without finding the same obstacles like the rest of the grid is a bit suspicious. For the team principles. Christian Horner was the first one to point the finger towards the MCL 38, hinting that a different look of the front wing might stand behind the massive power gain of the Woking-based squad. But with drivers like Alonso and Hamilton also investigating the car after the race, is McLaren really doing something illegal? Or is it all the product of their technical restructure and hard work behind the closed curtains? One of the greatest surprises in the current technical era revolves around McLaren and the amount of performance they've been able to add to the car compared to where they were in 2022. From a backmarker team and one that was happy to finish in the points, thanks to a new structure in the team and stellar leadership from Andrea Stella, McLaren has now turned the tide into a constant challenger up front. As a matter of fact, the team is very likely to enter the last nine races of the season as the clear favourite to beat, because they are the only squad on the grid to have a car that is working under any circumstances and not track specific like Red Bull or Ferrari. But according to Christian Horner, the difference that the closest rivals to his team are making right now revolves around a specific player, part, which is the front wing. Speaking to the media in Zandvoort, the second race in which McLaren brought a massive upgrade package, the Brit went on to say, I think the front wing is a key area where others have found some performance. I think that the way the front wings are being used is quite different. If you look at the front wing angles of McLaren and Mercedes, they're quite different. They are very, very different from the rest of the grid. McLaren is setting the benchmark now. That is clear in terms of pace. And they've been like that for the past couple of races. However, the upgrade package that McLaren brought to Zandvoort extended to a lot more than just their front wing. And what should worry Red Bull the most is the rear wing that the MCL 38 was equipped with. McLaren have now targeted efficiency and downforce to ensure that the balance between the straight line and the cornering speed is good, as well as improve the DRS effect, which is basically taking the battle right to Red Bull's court. We've seen that once the rear flap opens on the RB20, the speed difference can go up to 30 kilometers an hour. And that is something that McLaren has also shredded. For tracks where it would matter the most, such as the upcoming one in Monza. Although the concern is definitely there regarding the legality of McLaren's car, Horner doesn't seem too bothered about the championships as he went on to say, it's the fourth time this year, only the fourth time that Max's points lead had reduced. It's only Lando's second win, but we know we have to find so we were 78 points ahead. Now we are 70. We want to make sure that we extend the lead, not see it continuously diminish. It's worth noting that the team principal of Red Bull has taken quite a defensive stance on the entire situation in both of the championships, which doesn't bode well for the hopes of Red Bull to continue where they left off pre-Miami. They cannot always rely on the Verstappen factor if the car is progressing in a worse direction and teams like Ford. Ferrari and Mercedes managed to get into the mix in the last nine races, especially in circuits like Baku and Singapore, where the RB20 may struggle a lot. While it does sound like a cheap excuse due to the fact that Red Bull themselves have no idea where they went wrong, as they are now experimenting with setups and flaws of the car for both of their drivers. There might be some truth behind Horner's statement because he's not the only one. Who is suspicious about the performance of the MCL 38 after the race in Zandvoort? We could clearly see Alonso and Hamilton going full inspector mode and investigating the car from a close perspective, which means that they have also been surprised with the amount of performance that the team was able to put on the car in such a short period of. What has been a common practice in Formula One is that after two full years in the ground effect era, the cars have started to reach a certain limit and a shared belief among the F1 team executives was that small fragments of performance can be found here and there. But nothing too significant now from a team that had the fastest car on the majority of the race, but with a small margin to a dominant 22-second victory over Verstappen, who clearly drove an experimental version of the RB20, is something that is very hard to understand for the F1 teams, especially because of the fact that they haven't been able to unlock nearly a quarter of what McLaren found in just a short period of time. The trajectory for McLaren is something, and they've caught up with Red Bull a lot faster than they originally anticipated. 
The initial belief was that they could fight with the Austrian team by the end of 2024 and definitely put in a solid fight in 2025 as well. But Stella himself said that they were surprised how well the Imola upgrade package worked and how they were able to continue with the uprise curve from there onwards. Interestingly enough, that was the having the fastest car in the last 10 races has only brought three wins to the Woking base squad in 2024. Two of them belong to Norris and one to Piastri, and that is something that's making the F1 fan base scratch their heads as to why the championships are not they are now. But according to Andreas Stella, the goal is now to dominate both championships and replicate the success that Vettel had in 2013. And when talking about this, the team principal of McLaren said, in the Drivers' Championship, we definitely wanted to focus on the fact that it is possible. We even talked about it and looked at what Vettel did in 2013 and we said, we could do the same thing. Why not? We have to keep the focus. We have to believe that it is possible, but whether or not the McLarens can do it in a proper manner, time will tell, because if there is one thing for certain on the grid, it's the fact that Red Bull won't leave them resting. Especially after all of the shade that the Woking-based squad has thrown towards the Austrian team for breaching the budget cap. Zach Brown has openly admitted that he and Horner cannot be friends due to the rivalry in the sport. And to expect that the team principal of Red Bull would reply with an opposite energy is just plain fantasy. Horner is ready to have a full go at McLaren and do whatever it takes to keep the championship alive in both categories. However, the focus for Red Bull is now solely in the Drivers' Championship because it's obvious that the 30-point lead that they have over McLaren is just a question of when and not if they are going to get past as even the 70-point leader Verstappen has now taken a significant threat from the ultra-dominating car that McLaren has in their hands. When talking about his relationship with Horner, Brown didn't hold back words as the CEO of McLaren said, I've known Christian for about 25 to 30 years. We used to race against each other and I would say we used to get on. I believe in transparency. I believe in putting your hand up when you get something wrong. The cost cap... The excuses behind that? I never really heard a, we just got it wrong. I heard excuses and not taking ownership. When someone breaches the cost cap and doesn't seem to take it seriously, that's kind of hitting the integrity and core of the sport. To me, it's not personal. It's protecting our sport. Horner's response was quite direct and quite personal, as well as the Brit went on to say that he won't dignify the criticism of Brown with an answer of his own. So it's now safe to say that they are not the best friends on the grid and that the battle will continue in the remainder of the season. With everything that these two teams have on their hands, Norris will desperately need the help of his teammate, Piastri, as the Aussie could have helped the two-time race winner a lot had the strategy been a bit better and if he managed to get past Leclerc and finish third, furthermore, chasing Verstappen for P2 in Zandvoort. But we all know how competitive this duo can be and McLaren themselves have recognised the three-time threat of such a driver's pairing. So the team has stated loud and clear that if they ever come across a 50-50 situation, Norris would be the preferred driver in their orders, but only if he proves that he is the clear favourite over Piastri in that particular race. Elaborating on this, all the favours to the number one driver is not a healthy way of running a team. But for every race we analyse the situations, and in the 50-50 situations, or in those cases in which Lando may need a bit of extra support from the team, we are going to give it, but the team includes Oscar. Like the team should not do things that do not look reasonable to Oscar. We are in this together. With all of this in mind, what do you think about the latest shots that have been thrown from Horner towards McLaren and their front wing? And more importantly, what are your predictions for the remainder of 2024? Let us know down in the comments below, and once you've done that, have a look at the video that's appearing on your screen right now.